Welcome to uh, Studio First. My name is Sam Mort. I'm the owner of Mort Productions and uh, I also own the studio, Studio First, which is a studio that uh, you can rent out as uh, either an hourly basis or uh, as a co-op, a monthly co-op. Uh, so with us I have our very first uh, co-op partner. Uh, this is Lisa, owner of Fit to be Tied Clothing. She's also a photographer herself. Um, and Lisa's really good at doing uh, natural light, but uh, she wanted some practice on using some studio lighting. So I thought I'd bring her in and uh, teach her some studio lighting and teach you guys at the same time. So if you rent the studio, uh, these will be the lights that are actually going to be in the studio that you'll have access to, that you'll be able to use. Uh, so I think it'll be a good opportunity to, to learn together. Um, and over here we have Christina, our model tonight. Uh, she's a cosplayer, uh, local here to the Mesa area, right? Uh, she's also right now the president of uh, Justice League of Arizona. So you can find her, you can find both of them actually at uh, different uh, Comic-Con events around the state. Um, look for her at the JLA booth and look for her at the Fit to Be Tide booth. Um, so getting started, we, uh, the lights that we have at the studio are Honey Badger lights. They're uh, 320 watt per second lights. Um, and let's take a look at them. So this is the, uh, the Honey Badger light here. Um, this is kind of a direct competitor to um, Alien Bees. Uh, they have a similar light, Digi Bees. Uh, they have on the front here, you can see they have a uh, continuous LED. Um, and they also have a strobe. So you can use this in continuous mode or strobe. So on the back here, you have a bunch of different options. Um, this is obviously the power off and on. Uh, this is the, the settings LCD. Uh, the power cord. This is the sync cable. Uh, if you didn't have the the remote that comes with the the Hunter Badger Light, the Interfit uh, remote, then you can use the sync cable to hook up uh, your own sync cable or your own third-party uh, triggers. Um, the what's cool about these is they actually have a built-in transceiver. So when you're using the Interfit uh, remote, the one that's on your camera then it'll automatically talk to you if they're on the right channel. You don't have to do any kind of syncing, you don't have to do anything, it'll just automatically talk to these units. Um, so with the different channel, what this will do is, is let's say that uh, I'm shooting on this gray backdrop and we have somebody over here shooting on a black backdrop, then I can be on channel one, you can be on channel two, and using the same trigger, or the, you know, the, we both have our own triggers, then we'll be able to fire both flashes of blood interfering with each other. So the channel tell, tell uh, the communication between your camera and your flashes, uh, the ones that you're actually using. So you can change the channel, uh, and if they're not set to the same channel on your triggers, then they won't flash. Uh, the groups now are A through G, I think. Oh, A through H. Uh, the different groups will actually um, let you configure the power level. So like right now, this, is, this group A is set for five. Uh, you can set group B for like a 4, group C for power level 6, um, and you can do that all from the remote too. So 
Um, the groups are how you actually will, will group your, your power levels uh, on each flash that you use. So if you're only using one flash, you might only have a group A. Uh, in group A, you can set the power level to whatever you want by using your, your, your trigger, or you can set it on here um, directly. Uh, but if you have two flashes, you might have an A, a group and a B group. If you have six flashes, you have you know A through whatever it is. Um, and each one you can control independently now because it'll be on its own group. Um, you also have the ability to turn the flash on and off. Uh, what's useful for that is if you're doing continuous lighting, uh, then you can turn the flash off and just use the light that's coming out of it right now, the modeling light. Uh, you can also, if you push the model light, you can turn the model light all the way up. You can turn the model light off. Or you can have the model light um, actually go with the power level. So it'll actually progress as the power level goes up and get brighter as your power level goes up and down. Uh, what that's good for is, is when you're trying to figure out how the light's going to look on the model. Um, you can get an idea for like this light's going to be too bright, this light's going to be too dark before you even take the picture before the flash and fire, uh, because you can have the, the level going up and down with it. Um, the test button just tests to see, you know, to, to fires it. Uh, the beep just makes it so you can't hear when it's beeping. Uh, now the cell, what this does is it. Um, there's uh, actually a sensor right here. So let's say that, that you were using a different, or maybe you had an on-camera flash instead of using the trigger, or maybe you were using a third-party flash. Uh, this is gonna tell it to slave, basically. So you can have another flash trigger this by turning the cell on and off. So you can have another flash fire this flash. Um, so that's basically it for the controls. You no, know I have the cowboy, I have a cowboy set up at home, so I can find the... Yeah. The trigger's not knowing master slave. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you have like, let's say you had a Cowboy Studio light, you could bring the Cowboy Studio light in here, use your trigger, and then if this cell on, it'll flash this one. Like, you notice how none of the other ones have yeah. anything plugged into them, but like, see how they're all going off? Because they actually have the cell turned on, so they're just slaved off of this light. Cool. Um, they just sense the flash, and then they only flash themselves. Um, so that's basically it for the back of this. Uh, we'll talk about the mount on here. So the mount on here is kind of cool. They they designed it so it'll actually work with two different mounts. Uh, right now this is uh, has a Bowens mount on here. Let me turn the. Uh... So this is uh, has a Bowens mount, which is a kind of a universal uh, mount. So all of the modifiers that are in the studio are all using the Bowens mount. It supports these mounts as well, uh, which are collapsible. They're like collapsible soft boxes. Can you see them? Yeah. Um, and you just do that by you take this and you just kind of flip this over this uh, this lip right here. And now we switch to a soft box instead of the default. Um, so any, if you have these kind of mounts too, I don't know if you have any of these like this that are collapsible. They're, they're, I don't remember what they're actually called, but they're like collapsible soft box mounts. Um, you can actually do that as well. So these ones are good for like headshots. These soft boxes, they have. Um, like a curtain inside, and then they have this one to kind of make the light really soft. Um, the Bowens mount is really easy as well. So you have these three, you have these three uh, guides, or, or I don't know what it's called, there's three grooves inside of here as well. And what you do is you push it in, and you actually have to push back into it, and then this little dilly will kind of slide back. And once you push back, and, slide, and twist it, it'll snap. And then to take it out, you push this clip back and twist it the other way and it comes off. So all of these modifiers in here will have this same mount. Every single modifier that's in here has the same mount to, to clip to that. Um, even the big, uh, like the Octobox or the strip lights, they all have the same mount and the same way to connect it. Uh, so that's basically the main 
what you need to know to work these lights. Um, now after that, let's take a look at the different modifiers and then we'll take a look at, actually let's take a look at the trigger first and then we'll take a look at the different modifiers. Okay, so this is the trigger unit. Um, we have three of these here at the studio and our, our co-opies will have access to these uh, trigger units. Um, these are, have a standard hot shoe mount, so they'll mount on uh, just about any camera system on top of the hot shoe. Um, and you can see they have uh, kind of the same LCD on the back. This is the, the 4.5 is the power level. I guess I should have talked about that too. So there's different uh, stops. So four on these flashes is the lowest. Um, and then I don't know what the highest is, but four is the lowest. And even though these triggers will go lower, uh, this is for other other flashes. The, the lowest on, on, on these honey badgers is a four, the lowest power level. Every stop, so if you look at these, when every time you go up, you're going one tenth of a stop. So like 4.1, 4.2. Every stop is, uh, so this is a, a full stop from four to five. It's considered a full stop. Mm -hmm. So every time you go up a stop, you're giving it either 50% more power or 50% less power. So you're cutting your power in half or you're giving your double the power, basically, or not 50% more power. So uh, every time you do that, you're, you're, you're bumping it up and down. Um, and then you have the, the channel button selector here, so you can change your different channels. And then you have your group selector on this side. Um, you can also turn the flash on and off from, from here directly. Uh, you can turn the modeling light on and off, and you can turn the um, sound indicator on and off. Again, it's dependent on what group you're on and what channel you're on. So if you have one light on say channel 9 group G, then it'll only adjust the settings for that one light. Um, it's not going to adjust all of them. So it'll, if you put all your lights on group A, you can do that. You can have all your lights be on group A and then it'll adjust the settings for all of your lights. Uh, otherwise, it'll only adjust uh, the lights that are on that group. And then this up here is the uh, power on and off. You just hold it to turn it off and just tap it to turn it on. Um, that's basically it for the remote. Okay, so now we're going to talk about modifiers. Um, the modifiers are the actual, um, what goes on the end of the light. So like I said, this is a bone mount. Uh, so this light, this is the light without a modifier. This is actually a modifier. Um, this one right here is uh, just like a, I think it's like a six or seven inch um, dome. And it has a barn door on it right now with a grid on it. And uh, it actually has a gel on it too. So this one's kind of a few modifiers in one, even though it's kind of small with a couple moving parts on it. This is a soft box right here. Um, this is the one that came with the, with the Interfit, uh, with the Honey Badgers. It's kind of a smaller one. Um, I haven't really used them yet, but these are really good for um, doing like uh, uh, head shots, uh, maybe the three quarter body shots. Uh, but these are kind of small, so you're not gonna really be able to do full body shots with them. Um, back here, we have what's called an Octobox. This is a really big one. Uh, I think it's 50 inches, maybe 60 inches. Um, this is really good for outputting a lot of um, just kind of a soft, even light over the whole model. Uh, this one actually has an egg carton on it. Uh, you can take the egg carton off by taking it off the Velcro. Uh, this little grid here we call an egg carton, and it just kind of keeps the light directed uh, in one spot. Um, this modifier right here, this is actually a collapsible beauty dish. Uh, beauty dishes are one of my favorite modifiers. Um, there's actually a plate in the center right here that reflects the light back and up and around. And you can probably see that. You can take this off. You can see there's a plate right here that pushes that light back and around. Um, so it kind of pushes the light around the model as well. Uh, it makes really good uh, soft shadows. Uh, so I really like this one a lot. And this right here is another one of my favorites, which is called a, a strip box. Um, and you can see this is a pretty long strip box. I want to say it's 50 inches. Uh, strip boxes are really good for doing kind of edge lighting. Um, I like to use them a lot for um, like fitness shoots. Uh, just to use a single one of them. It kind of, when you, when you use one of them across the body, it kind of really shows off people's muscles and abs and stuff. So if you have somebody who's really muscular, you can kind of shoot this across their body. Uh, and it gives kind of stronger shadows. It's not that wide, so it's kind of a, you know, a slim sliver of light that kind of comes out of it. Uh, we have two of these in the studio. 
And lastly, we just have this, which is another seven inch dish or six inch dish. Um, this one's really good for actually doing for, um, I think like video. I like to use it for, um, I like using it for edge light, uh, shooting it from behind the model or hair light from over the top of the model. Uh, it makes a really harsh light. There's almost, the, the shadows are not soft at all. So it makes like a really harsh light and it's really good for like edge lighting. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot these at the backdrop and then we're gonna shoot these at Christina and we can see how they look on the backdrop, what kind of, kind of light cone they're making and then we'll use them on the model and see what they look like on the model. So, um, <laughs> We almost never shoot straight on. Oh, I'm sorry, I almost never shoot straight on. Uh, usually you like to have, you like to have your lights at like a 45 degree angle. Yeah. So we just did one of just the backdrop. We shot it straight on, just the backdrop. Now we turn it to a 45 degree angle and we're gonna shoot it again. Um, so stand a little bit more. No, no, you're good where you're at. Maybe, maybe stand up just a little bit. That's good. And yeah, I and mean, then you center yourself a little more. If you like natural lighting, you can almost use this to replace natural lighting. Uh, it's kind of like an artificial light to, to simulate because it's so big and you can adjust the power levels. Uh -huh. So you can make it look like a natural light. You know, like you can make it look like it's like coming higher. from a big window. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. I think it's actually a little brighter here for me, but yeah, you can turn it up. So you can. So remember, you can you can turn it up from here. So if you turn turn your camera back on and then turn this up another mm -hmm. stop. Turn the power level up to another stop. Like what is that? Uh, for here, for this plus or minus. So if you turn it up to like uh, six. You can blind you. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Right? Okay. See how that works. Oh my god, that works. Um, now this one I like you saying to shoot everything at a 45 degree angle. Uh, but this one we're going to do a little bit different. This is actually a beauty dish. And, uh, so let's take a step off again and we'll have Lisa to shoot the, to shoot the back part. So you can use boom, this is the boom right here, and you can use them um, to go behind the model, or in this case we're going to use it because this is the, uh, it's the beauty dish, and I like the beauty dish to be straight on, and so you really want to be kind of underneath the light uh, when you're shooting straight on, and it's hard to get underneath the light if the light's on a stand and the pole right in front of you. Uh, with the boom, you can extend this out, and then you can stand directly underneath the light. And it not interfere with where you're at. So you can come here and take one of just the backdrop. Now with this one, you really want it to be, you want, you want it to be really in line. So you want the model lined up, you want this light lined up, you want it to be straight with her. And um, remember this is the beauty dish? Yeah. I told you there's like a, a spot right here in the middle. Mm -hmm. So you want this spot okay. to be aimed right in her face. Okay. Um, and then you almost want your camera lens to be right here. Uh, so she almost can't even see you when you're doing it. So you put the camera lens like right here on your you like a little That's sniper ninja guy, yeah. That's usually how I shoot anyway, my friends are home shooting. And what I like about this is because because it's so high up and it shoots down, what it'll do is it'll really highlight her chin and kind of make these shadows really strong on her chin. Like that, you see? And it makes her jawline like really, really stand out. That's what I mean. <laughs> That's what most of us need, right? Um, <laughs> But if you look at the backdrop too, if you actually zoom out a little bit, it creates a really cool vignette effect on the backdrop as well. Yeah. And so th these ones are, this this is a really good one for kind of three quarters again. Um, once you start getting down there, it's kind of the light's gonna fall off and your legs are gonna come out. Yeah. So this is really a good kind of a three quarter shot. Probably good. This one's yeah. one, of my, one of my favorite modifiers. 
Um, if you need the lay, what you can do is you can start, this is where we're going to start adding stuff, you know. So when you're doing something like this and you're just doing like three quarter stuff, but then you want to get a leg in there, then you can put in like a strip box. Yeah. You know? And now you're higher on this leg. Um, if you want to get, if they don't like. You can get both going, so you kind of Right. Yeah. You can get both going. Uh, if you want to do like um, their hair is black and they're on a black backdrop, then you can put them like behind them. Oh, yeah. You can do the okay. um, But that's it really for the, the modifiers. I mean, we have. We have a couple others. We have these ones, like I said, for, but they're not going to be. It's not going to be really good to show these off. So now we have a three light setup that we're going to use. Um, we have the uh, the strip box over here. We have um, a green gel six inch uh, dish with a grid and a barn door on it. Um, what I like about the barn door is you can you can use this make sure that uh, the light is not spilling onto the backdrop and we just have the green coming down onto the model um, and you can see because of the because of the uh, continuous lighting we're able to see exactly what that green is going to look like and as we move it far away you can see it kind of saturates more as we move it closer it kind of turns white so that's how gels usually work is um, the closer you are to the light the whiter they're going to be the further away the more saturated they're going to be um, so when you're working with gels, you got to worry about power level and distance to kind of get that effect. Um, we also have our beauty dish up here. And you ready, Christina? So with our continuous lighting on, we're able to already see and tell kind of what the shadows are going to look like uh, when we take the photo. Uh, you can kind of see this edge lighting here. Hold on. You can see here on this side of her face, we have uh, a, a really nice green edge light which kind of offsets her outfit. Um, and on this side here, you can see from this, this light here, we're getting a nice shadow that we like underneath her chin.